The STEC 55 Autopilot has three components, Enunciator, Flight Guidance Computer, and Master Switch. The system will work with the Master Switch in the FD position. This simply turns on the Flight Director and all flying has to be done manually. If FD, AP, or Flight Director Autopilot Master is switched up, then the airplane will fly itself. This system does not have an altitude selector. To fly a specific altitude, you have to press VS or vertical speed, pitch the airplane up or down, get to the selected altitude, then press altitude. The ALT button only holds the present altitude where the button was pressed. Four buttons control left-right movement, heading, nav, approach, and reverse. The approach button will also control altitude on an ILS approach when intercepting the glide slope. Altitude holds the current altitude and VS or vertical speed lets you adjust your vertical speed up to plus or minus 2,000 feet. If heading mode is selected, the autopilot will turn left or right and follow the green heading bug. When nav or approach mode is selected, the airplane will turn left or right into the course and intercept on a 45 degree angle. On this autopilot, nav and approach have slightly different sensitivities. Approach is a little bit more sensitive. You can use nav or approach for in route operations with this autopilot. You can see on the GPS screen and on the HSI, we're intercepting the course by a 45 degree angle. Nav will follow the GPS, VOR, or a localizer. We're currently in GPS mode. If we wanted to switch from GPS to VOR, we would press the CDI button up here on the GPS. And I'll show you that in just a minute, but now you can see the on the HSI, the course is intercepting. The airplane's making a right turn, and it's going to correct and fly that course for us. I'm currently tuning 112.1. Kona VOR. We're going to switch the source. We're going to press CDI. We're going to go from GPS to VOR. When we go to VOR mode, it's going to say VLOC. So we're still in VOR mode. I've spun in the 270 degree radial, and I'm going to press NAV. When I press nav, it's going to intercept on a 45 degree angle. You can see right about there is a 45 degree angle. Once the needle starts to center, it'll slowly make a right turn back to west and follow the course. Now we're going to skip ahead and do altitude and vertical speed modes. When I press vertical speed, that will take us out of altitude hold mode. To change the vertical speed, rotate this knob up or down. The limit is plus or minus 2,000 feet. So right now we're climbing 2,000 feet per minute. If we press the altitude hold button, it will instantly level the airplane off. It's not very smooth, it's very abrupt. A better way to do that is when you're close to your altitude, reduce your vertical speed as you near your altitude to maybe two, three hundred feet per minute, then press altitude. So now to descend, we're gonna do the same thing. Press vertical speed to take us out of altitude hold mode, then rotate the knob to the desired rate of descent. So we see minus five, that's minus 500. Minus 10 would be minus 1,000 feet per minute, and so on. I'm gonna take us down to 1,800. We were doing 500 feet per minute down. Now we're doing 200 feet per minute down as we near 800 slowly. When we hit 1,800, we can just reach up, press out, and it's much smoother. Just like that, that's a much easier way, it's much smoother than uh, previously. Okay, we've done heading and nav. Now the next button in order is approach. Approach mode is used when doing an ILS approach when you want to intercept a glide slope. Currently we're in nav. Doing an ILS, if we leave it in nav, we'll follow the localizer, but we will never capture the glide slope. It won't do anything. It'll just stay at whatever altitude we've got held, like right now, 
2,500 feet. Another thing to point out when doing a localizer or ILS approach, you want to make sure you're in VLOC. The only time you're going to be in GPS is if you're doing an RNAV approach or flying the GPS to go from point A to point B. Some of you may notice we do have nav mode selected and if you look to the right you can see GS or glide slope. That should not be. I did read in the manual that that can happen sometimes, but it's usually grayed out. That might be a simism, but I'm just going to keep everything standard when you're doing an ILS approach. Press approach so it will follow the glide slope. Now that we have approach armed, we can see the glide slope coming down. Once it centers, the airplane will start to descend and follow the glide slope down to the runway. You'll also notice once the glide slope captures, the altitude hold mode will go away. And once that happens, we'll move along and show you the next button, reverse. Some airplanes is reverse, some airplanes you'll see BC or back course, which is a localizer back course approach. The reverse button is the only way the airplane knows that it's doing a localizer back course. And this will prevent the airplane from turning the wrong direction like it is now. It needs to be turning left, but it's turning to the right. When doing a localizer back course approach, you would not press the reverse button until you're on the procedure turn inbound, or you could press reverse when being vectored by ATC and cleared for the approach. Like in the situation we're in now, we're on a 45 degree intercept, cleared for the approach, we can press reverse. When reverse is pressed, it also brings up approach mode. There's no glide slope to follow, but what approach does do is increase the sensitivity. It's basically not going to let the needle get as far off before it starts to crack to bring it back to center. You can see the runway in the red box. The head of the course needle is on the front course, which is behind us. Normally it's in front of us, but the airplane is flying the proper direction to intercept the course on this HSI, thanks to the reverse button. That may seem a little confusing. They're not that bad once you understand how to do them. I am going to do some localizer back course approaches in the future, showing the difference between a localizer back course with an HSI and a localizer back course with a plain old VOR indicator. I didn't talk about it a whole lot yet, but the enunciator up here works off of the flight guidance computer down here. When you press a button on the flight guidance computer, you should see a corresponding message come up on the enunciator. So you press it down here, confirm it up here. That's about all I have on this. Thank you for watching.